Hello, I'm Jim Bushler, the Geology Program Assistant here at Northern Virginia Community College. In this series of videos, we're going to step you through the process of creating rock-thin sections using some of our samples that we've collected here in the state of Virginia. A thin section is a thin slice of rock, only 30 microns thick, that is mounted to a glass slide and viewed and analyzed using a polarizing light microscope. The creation of thin sections is an analytical technique which allows us to identify the mineral composition of a rock, observe any structural features, and interpret the environmental conditions under which the rock formed. We use thin sections in geology courses such as mineralogy, igneous and metamorphic petrology, and of course, in research. Here, one of our students is using a polarizing light microscope to analyze rock samples that he collected and brought back from Texas as a participant in an REU, which is a research experience for undergraduates through the University of Texas, El Paso. Let's step into our geology lab prep room where we'll demonstrate and step you through the thin section making process. Welcome to the geology lab prep room here at Northern Virginia Community College. As geologists, we often return from the field with rock samples that we want to examine and study more closely than we can when we're out in the field. One of the common methods that geologists use when they come back to the lab is to prepare a rock thin section from their rock samples. The variability that exists amongst different rocks needs to be considered when making a thin section, which is why we've selected three rocks from the state of Virginia to demonstrate some of the nuances that can occur during the thin section making process. These rocks include an aplite, which is a fine-grained igneous rock of felsic composition. This one is from an intrusive dike that cuts across a pluton known as the Petersburg Granite, exposed along the James River in Richmond, Virginia. We also have a granodiorite gneiss from the Columbia Pluton, which is one of several Ordovician Age plutons found in the Virginia Piedmont associated with a mountain building event known as the Taconian orogeny, which took place approximately 460 million years ago. And finally, the Catoctin Greenstone, a metamorphosed flood basalt found throughout the Blue Ridge associated with the breakup of the supercontinent that preceded Pangaea, known as Rodinia, somewhere around 550 to 570 million years ago. So, a good thin section can provide a lot of important information about your rock sample, such as its mineral composition or even the conditions under which it formed. Unfortunately, getting from your rock sample down to your finished thin section is a multitask process that takes some time and a fair amount of patience. However, with some instruction and some practice, you too will be on your way to making your own quality thin sections. Here in our lab, there is a variety of equipment that we use to make thin sections. Although the equipment that you will be using may be different, the processes and basic procedures will remain the same. It is important that you familiarize yourself with your equipment, how it operates, and how to work with it safely before you begin doing any actual thin section work. So, let's get started by introducing you to the equipment we have and how it works. <laughs> 